What is going on everybody? It's Alex coming back at you with another video and today we're going to be doing a Panthers season preview, breakdown, roster, deep dive, whatever the hell you want to call it. So if you guys are new, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, show some love because I haven't shown any love for y'all, but I'm trying to do this video so I do it. We're coming on the end of the whole entire series. I'm skipping the Seahawks because they're just crap in general. Uh, I don't really think there's much value there and I'd rather not waste games that we could be deciding with teams that actually matter. So let's continue. Let's kick it right into this. Starting off with the rookie previews. Uh, yes, Matt and I went to high school together. He was my quarterback. Um, sucks that he has a list Frank injury. Obviously, he didn't really show much potential during the preseason. But again, the offensive line wasn't working well. The backups weren't doing too hot. So again, you can't really blame Matt. It's not a strong evaluation just yet. Icky's had some great plays. He's had some pretty meth plays. He got lit up by Kyle Duggar, but we all knew this was an investment for the long run. He was my tackle three, which a lot of people have him as tackle one. So, I mean, even Connor Rogers had him as the number one player in the draft. There's a lot of love for him, and he's a really good player. Brandon Smith was another addition. I thought that was phenomenal. Overall, I couldn't, like, Amari Barno, he's just a thin guy who could run really fast, and that was, like, my least favorite pick, and it's a pretty damn good pick. You did a really good job this draft, and I think that's going to benefit you guys in the long run because also if Matt can stay healthy, he has a lot of potential for y'all. So let's slide right into the roster. We're using spottrack.com, and of course, they kind of put the positions by alphabetical order. Starting off with the quarterback sitch, we got Mayfield, Darnold, and Corral, and Walker. I honestly think this is an underrated quarterback room. I do. Baker's really good. Sam. Um, He's a great backup. He has a lot of potential, but I'm starting to lose faith that he'll ever reach it. And I wasn't a fan of Sam in the first place. So it sucks to say I'm right. Like I legitimately don't like saying that I'm right because I like good football. I don't like being correct. That's, I mean, it's nice validation, but you know, fun football is more fun to watch than, you know, stroking my ego. Uh, Matt is hurt of course for the year, but PJ Walker is a great backup. Again, I don't think that the, ceiling is necessarily there like the realistic ceiling obviously if Darnold and Baker hit their stride they're gonna do great yada yada the realistic ceiling right now uh, Baker hasn't really shown it in a while he's also had health concerns same thing with Sam um, it's just not looking great running back speaking of injury history Christian McCaffrey I mean obviously he's possibly the best running back in the NFL when healthy because he's just a Swiss army knife so uh, holistically speaking Christian McCaffrey might be the best and you know, Chuba's a great backup. I want another backup running back in here that's different than Chuba because he also has had fumbling health and then consistency issues. But you got Deontay Foreman as well. Just a nitpick. Uh, wide receivers. So have they loaded him in yet? They have. Uh, this is just breaking today. LaVisca Chenault got traded to y'all. God only knows. I mean, like, you didn't need him. I don't really understand it. So I guess we'll talk about it right now because it'll probably be in the title of the video. Uh, LaVisca was a phenomenal player for a team that needed more weapons. I have no idea why the hell the Jags traded him. It's another thing that just, pff, I don't get it. CJ Henderson, obviously, um, I mean, he's gone. So I don't have the details on it right now because it just happened, like literally like, like an hour ago. So pretty insane. Pretty insane. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Uh, LaVisca Chanel, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Terrace Marshall, arguably a top tier, top four receiving room. The more I look at this, we're going to be flipping some games because I've not shown y'all any love and you need to get some love. You have good depth here as well with Shai Smith, right, as a fifth rounder. Uh, it was one of the players. It was weird. He's one of the few players I did not like because of how he ran his route. He leans into his routes before he burn, uh, before he takes a turn. So yeah, he just hasn't been able to hit his stride. Rashard Higgins is a good addition, too. You have some good players in here. Tight end-wise, Thomas and Tremble are both very solid, in my opinion. I want more tight end depth slash a true tight end one, but, I mean, given Tremble's age, he can still develop into that, too. Tackle-wise, you have Icky as well as Taylor Moten. I don't have much of an issue with that at all. Like, realistically, that's a pretty dynamic tackle duo that you should have for a while. And I'm glad to see that Taylor Moten got that big contract because he deserves it. Uh, besides that, backup Cam Irving. I'm pretty sure he started last year. 
So I think that's nice to have now as a backup rather than a starter. I wasn't a fan of Brady Christensen. I had a fifth round grade on him and I think he'd work better possibly as a guard. I don't know. I wasn't a big fan and he hasn't really been able to really prove himself. I know Panthers fans hate when I say that, but there's a reason you're continuing to draft offensive line. Uh, you, you shit on me when I started taking tackle in the first and those voices quieted down. Like, again, he's not a, like, it doesn't matter if you're good enough to be able to play in the NFL. Again, I think he does have that capability, but I don't think he has the level of play to be able to withstand starters in the NFL. And therefore you can't be a starter in the NFL. My God, it's the end of a school day. Y'all. So bear with the hair. Um, I know you guys don't give a rat's ass. So uh, guard wise, you got Cade Mays, Austin Corbett, uh, Deontay Brown, Michael Jordan. Like honestly, Austin Corbett was a really good addition. I think that was a phenomenal addition for you guys because guard was probably your biggest issue. Like people were saying like, uh, like don't shit on Cam Irving. The guard plays even worse. That's an issue. So uh, I don't know who, who's exactly starting over these guys. You guys can please say that. I mean, sport track really needs to help out with that. Um, please let me know. That'd be great. Cause again, you follow 32 team or I follow 32. You follow one. It helps a lot. But I think Deontay Brown should be getting starting reps. I'm praying that's not Michael freaking Jordan. The, this Michael Jordan. But center-wise, we got Pat Elfline. Oh, Bradley Bozeman's probably on the on the squad. Okay. So thank fuck for that. Um, these two guys should be starting. So if they aren't, that's a little bit sketchy. I think that both of them are starter quality on this line. It's honestly not a bad line. Overall, the offense looks like it could surprise a lot of people, including myself. Defensive tackle wise, Derek Brown, first round pick, um, hasn't panned out to be the guy you wanted to be. That's a risk you take with drafting a D tackle in the top 10. He was an animal in college at Auburn. I still think he can be totally worth a contract extension when he comes through, as long as it's not like an actual top tier contract extension. He's a good guy to have in your rotation. A Davion Nixon, I don't know enough about his impact so far, but hey, he still had a ton of uh, potential coming out of JUCO. Davion has a lot to potentially offer. Even Marquan McCall, pretty sure he's 400 pounds. Like, dude has some meat on his bones. I do like that a lot. I would say that I'd rather have a better D tackle two, so to speak, or interior two. But we're really nitpicking there. Defensive end-wise, Brian Burns is a stud. Uh, he was probably my favorite player from that draft. Uh, like, in terms of value, I loved him to death. Matt Ioannidis is really good as a vet as well. Yutur Gross Matos, I've heard, had an ascension. So very excited to see that. Amari Barno, good depth there as well. So that's a really good group. And I want to check outside linebacker. So obviously these guys are going to be kind of starting in the middle. Corey Littleton's a good addition, especially for the price. I do think that he's underrated. Brandon Smith in there. Obviously you got Shaq Thompson. Um I mean, you do have dudes who are worth starting. I would say that linebacker three position is a little bit suspect, like legitimately. And it's something that I wanted to address for you guys last year. Didn't really happen apart from Brand Smith late, but you use your picks to um, trade away. So that's understandable for, I mean, it was for Darnold, if I'm not mistaken. But regardless, uh, Brandon Smith, I hope to God he can get some starting reps this year because he needs all the development he can get. Look at him. He's 21, can run a 4-5-3 at 240 pounds. The dude's a beast. Shaq Thompson is a beast as well. So very excited to see that. Like Again, I think that's a hole that will be possibly addressed with time rather than draft position so, or drafting a player for it. So keep strong there, because of course you can put someone like Jeremy Chin in that position. Xavier Woods is there. The more I'm reading this, the more I'm like feeling this team could legit be a contender if baker stays healthy like honestly if the offensive line is good enough this team could actually do some shit and i've totally underrated them from my um from my projections because i like xavier woods a lot jeremy chin's a beast i'm not in the mood to pay him personally i'm obviously you do but it's like that's gonna be a bitch of a contract so looking at the corners as well Dante Jackson, J.C. Horn, C.J. Henderson, Keith Taylor. That's a possibly top three uh, cornerback room in terms of just potential talent here. You look at all these guys are signed for the next couple of years as well in a market where corners are extremely expensive. Like 
look at that deal you got him. Like, that's ridiculous. That's a great price on a great corner. Has some injury history here, but uh, even Keelan Barnes ran, I think, in the 4-2s, and he ran 4-2-3, and he was pretty good too. No idea why the hell he fell. So, yeah, honestly, the more I'm looking at this, we're going to be switching up some games. So, sorry to the other teams, but week one, the Browns are coming in. It still could be this way, but you're also going to Carolina. Um, so, Browns fans, sorry. Uh, yeah, you guys can see I am not a fan of the Browns this year. I do not think they're good at all. Uh, the Giants at home, they do have a lot of potential. I'm going to give them that game. I think they could just try to at least put it together. The Saints, this is going to be a fun one. I'm going to do my next video on the Saints because I think they deserve it. Um, you're at home. I'm going to be taking the team that's not in a dome at that point. So I think that that's, I mean, that's fair, right? You're going to South Carolina in the middle of the heat. Cardinals come to town. Uh, honestly, with the corner, the lack of corner depth and the just sheer number of wide receivers on this roster, including CMC, uh, we're flipping this game. I legitimately believe in this team. And again, we're assuming healthiness for Baker. Um, Niners, I'm going to give it to them because Niners are just the Niners. Rams have a lot of potential too. Uh, the Bucks. So this could be an upset game. Legitimately, you have the talent necessary to lock up the Bucks. Uh, I don't want to kind of bet against Brady in his final year. I'm going to call an upset here. Man, I'm kissing your guys' ass, aren't I? Um, <laughs> you go to the Falcons. I'm going to give this one. Again, it's in division. Usually in division games are pretty tough. I don't think they should win it off of merit, but I don't think you guys should win that game either. Uh, the Bengals are a really good squad. You're going to get revenge and whoop the ass of the Falcons at home. Uh, the, I don't need to talk about the Ravens fully rested, right? But you go here again, you're in Carolina. I, I'm not a believer in the, the Broncos this year. I'm not. I just don't think Russ has that gear necessary to propel, uh, to propel this team to that type of level anymore. You know, the Seahawks, I can't stand the Seahawks. The Steelers, I think you could beat them, but I'm not going to do that. I just think that at that time, the weather isn't as big of a factor. And I, I have some faith in the Steelers, man. I do. Uh, but the Lions, they have a really good team too. I'm going to keep it as is. Buccaneers are going to take the dub there. And then you are in New Orleans. I got to give New Orleans a dub because I do think that they might try to be making some type of push to have some type of proof. I mean, it puts you guys at seven and 10. That's a pretty damn good record. And I flipped some games, even against a team like the Browns, where we'll just show it right now. I have very little faith. They have a tough schedule though. They do. They have a legitimately tough schedule. And I think he comes back in a week 13. So like Deshaun will be back here, gives revenge. And look at this. He has to play the Ravens. He gets a dub against their, like, the Browns have a sucky schedule. This isn't a Browns video, though, Alex. This is a Panthers video. Ending off the year 7 and 10 is going to be a great upgrade for you guys overall because you guys are going to start out hot. You're going to lose some games. But, hey, you know what? You had some really good potential chances in here. I think this could be a big upset game. But, hey, let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the far side. Peace.